Over to you. Students' book, grade 12. Module 1, World Issues. Unit 1, The Law. Page 12, Discuss. Exercise 1. Refer to the pictures on page 12, then discuss these questions. A. What happens in this place? B. What do you think the scales represent? C. What do you know about Hammurabi's code? How is it related to these pictures? Exercise 2. You are going to hear a talk about the law. Before you listen to the talk, listen to these words from A to I, then match them to their meanings from 1 to 9. The words A. Enforce Verb B. Govern Verb C. Guilty D. Innocent E. Jury F. Legal G. Principal H. Property I. Prove Verb The meanings 1. Not responsible for a crime 2. Something valuable which belongs to someone 3. Group of people in court who decide whether someone is guilty 4. Rule or belief 5. Control 6. Responsible for a crime 7. Show that something is true. 8. Relating to the law. 9. Put into practice or carry out. Listen. Exercise 3. You are going to listen to a lecture about lawmaking. Before you listen, try to answer these questions. Discuss your answers with a partner. A. Can you think of an action that everyone in every country thinks is wrong? B. How long ago do you think the first code of law was made? C. Who makes the laws in most societies? D. You are going to hear about three different types of law, including criminal law and civil law. What is the third type of law the speaker mentions? Exercise 4. Listen to the lecture and check the answers to the questions in Exercise 3. Module 1. Unit 1. 1.1. 1. 1. Page 12. Exercise 4. My talk today is an introduction to the law, lawmaking, and legal systems. First of all, can anyone tell me what the law is? It's the collection of rules of a country, isn't it? That's right. My definition is this. The law is the code or set of rules which govern all individuals and organisations in society. Although different countries have different codes of law, some actions have always been crimes almost everywhere. Can anyone suggest an action of this kind? How about theft? Yes, that's certainly one. And of course, murder is another. Another basic principle of most systems of law is that a person is innocent until someone proves that they are guilty. OK, so what do we know about the history of lawmaking? Does anyone know when the earliest code of law was established? Was it about two and a half thousand years ago? No, it was much earlier than that. The earliest code of law we know about was established nearly 4,000 years ago by the Middle Eastern ruler Hammurabi. This consisted of 282 laws which governed the family, 
work, personal property, and trade. Since then, every country has developed its own code of law over hundreds or thousands of years. Let's move on. Can someone tell me who makes laws? Governments make laws, don't they? That's right. In most modern societies, governments make laws, and the police and judges enforce them. In some countries, juries made up of members of the public decide whether an accused person is innocent or guilty. In most systems, there are three main types of law. Firstly, the one that people know most about. Criminal law, which deals with murder and other acts of violence and crimes against property such as theft. The second type is civil law, which deals with a wide range of actions from arguments between neighbours to the behaviour of large companies. And can anyone tell me what the third type of law is? Is it、uh, personal law? Not quite. It's family law, which is concerned mainly with family relationships, marriage, adoption, and the welfare of children. As I am sure you are aware, the law affects every area of people's daily lives, from driving their cars to paying tax. But to work effectively. Laws must be backed by penalties and punishments imposed by courts. So, for example, individuals who have committed murder or theft are sent to prison. But what would be a typical punishment for someone who had done something less serious? Say, someone who has damaged their neighbour's property. They usually have to pay a fine, don't they? Yes, that's right. Okay, my final question is this: Why is it so important to have laws? More people would behave badly if we didn't have laws, wouldn't they? That's right. The simple truth is this: Without laws, there would be chaos. Exercise five. Listen again. And choose the correct answers to these questions. A. How does the speaker define law? One, a special code. Two, rules which control society. Three, individual rules. Four, the rules of an organization. B. Who makes sure people obey codes of law? One. Governments, two, police and judges, three, members of the public, four, juries. C, which type of law deals with murder and theft? One, criminal law, two, family law, three, civil law, four, property law. Exercise six. Are the following statements true or false? Justify your answers. A. Some actions have always been considered crimes. B. In most legal systems, a person is presumed guilty until proven innocent. C. Hammurabi's code of law consisted of 272 laws. D. The police and judges make laws. Think and speak, discussing the law, expressing opinion. Exercise seven. Listen to the text and discuss the questions below in pairs or groups. A tolerant society, just like the rest of the world, Kuwaiti laws are made to protect the individual rights of the people living there. Kuwait has a well-structured and clearly defined judiciary. Composed of summary, military, and religious courts, amongst others, the Emir 
in consultation with the Justice Ministry, appoints judge in the regular courts. The law is drawn from the teachings of the Holy Quran and protects the rights of all people of all religious persuasions, ensuring a safe, just, and tolerant society. Question A. What is the main purpose of sending people to prison? To punish them or to protect society? Question B. How do Islamic values influence the system of laws in Kuwait? Grammar. Present perfect simple and continuous. Grammar reference page 122. Exercise 1. What is the difference in meaning between the verbs in these pairs of sentences? A. Mishari has studied law and history this year. Mishari has been studying law and history for four years. B. Lamia has written two essays this morning. Lamia has been writing an essay all morning. C. The police have interviewed two people so far today. The police have been interviewing people all week. Exercise 2. Write two different answers to each of these questions. A. What have you done so far this week? I have played tennis three times. I have number B. What are some of the things you have been doing for a length of time? I have been playing the piano. I have been number C. How long have you been doing these things? I have been playing the piano since I was 13. Or for three years. I have been comparative and contrastive connectors. Grammar reference page 122. Exercise 3. Which words or phrases in the following three sentences are used to compare or contrast two things, people, or situations? A. Instead of becoming a lawyer like his father, he chose to become a policeman. B. In comparison with other careers, the legal profession can be quite stressful. C. Policemen earn a modest wage. On the other hand, lawyers are often very well paid. Exercise 4. What is being compared or contrasted in each of the sentences in exercise 3 above? In sentence 3a, the writer is comparing the career choice of a son compared with that of his father. Exercise 5. Write sentences contrasting or comparing the information in these lists. Use the words and phrases. On the other hand, instead of, in comparison, but, whereas. The policemen arrest criminals, lawyers prosecute criminals. The answer will be, policemen arrest criminals, whereas lawyers prosecute criminals. Or, instead of prosecuting criminals, like lawyers, policemen arrest criminals. Now, follow the same. Number one, policemen carry handcuffs. Lawyers carry briefcases. Number two, policemen have to be very fit. Lawyers have to be very intelligent. Number three, policemen are paid by the government. Lawyers are paid by their clients. Vocabulary.
words with more than one meaning. Exercise 1. Match the definitions below to the words in examples A to E, then listen to the two example sentences for each word. Which one uses the word according to the definition? A. Judge. Number 1. The judge handed down a fair sentence. Number 2. You shouldn't judge a book by its cover. B. Sentence. Number 1. The 10 year sentence was described as fair. Number 2. She wrote a complex sentence. C. Defense. Number 1. The defense asked for more time to prepare their arguments. Number 2. The army provided the country's defense. D. Case. Number 1. The prosecution presented their case to the jury. Number 2. I packed my belongings into a case. E. Brief. Number 1. It was a brief holiday. Number 2. The brief set out their points and arguments. Now to the definitions. Number 1. The action by which something resists attack. Number 2. The punishment imposed on a criminal by a court. Number 3. A container in which clothes and other belongings may be stored. Number 4. A defendant's representative in a legal dispute. Number 5. A legal dispute to be settled in a court of law. Number 6. To form an opinion about something. Number 7. Of a short duration. Number 8. A public official appointed to preside over legal disputes. Number 9. A group of words normally containing a subject and verb that expresses a complete idea. Number 10. A written summary of the legal point supporting one side's case. Exercise 2. Use a dictionary or the glossary at the end of this book to check the multiple meanings of the following words. A. Mean. B. Note. C. Bench. D. Spring. E. Row. Nouns and adjectives. Exercise 3. Complete these sentences with adjectives related to the nouns in brackets. You may need to use a dictionary. You have three sentences. A. Many people believe that the worst crimes are murder and other acts, between brackets, violence. B. There would be a space situation in society if there were no space system, between brackets, chaos, and low. C. He left court a free man because he had proved that he was space. The jury said he was not space. Between brackets, innocence, guilt. Listening. Legal disputes. Exercise 1. Listen to the following essay and discuss these questions. A. What are the arguments for more court cases? B. What are the arguments against? C. What is meant by a culture of blame? The amount of litigation brought against everyday people has increased dramatically in recent years. A key example is the case of a man in Yorkshire who is suing his neighbor after falling on his pathway. He contends that his neighbor was responsible for maintaining the path. The neighbor claims that the man would have fallen regardless. They are now locked in a bitter court case that looks set to drag on for months 
and cost both men substantial amounts of money. The main argument against such cases is that they are a reflection of an emerging culture of blame. People search for someone to blame for accidents that, in the past, they would have simply taken responsibility for themselves. Indeed, ordinary people suing each other has become so commonplace that countless firms of lawyers have sprung up specifically to deal with these cases. These petty grievances clog up the courts and prevent prosecutions against real criminals. However, supporters of litigation argue that the increase in court cases actually shows our courts are working. As Mark Shields, spokesperson for a pro-litigation group, states the increase in legal cases reflects a growing desire in society to protect everyone from the effects of criminal neglect. For them, the opportunity for people to hold others accountable for their own everyday grievances is a key feature of any good society. Ultimately, I believe we must take care to ensure that minor issues, which could normally be resolved without the assistance of the courts, do not prevent our legal system from operating efficiently. For everyday grievances, the courts should be the very last resort rather than the first port of call. Exercise 2. Listen to the essay again. Match each paragraph with one of these headings. A. The views of the writer. B. The arguments for more litigation. C. The arguments against more litigation. D. Background information. Think and speak. Making conclusions. Agreeing and disagreeing. Exercise 3. Listen and discuss. A. What conclusions does the writer reach? Do you agree? B. Do you think people should solve minor issues in court? Why or why not? How else could people solve such disagreements? C. Which, if either, do you think is more important, ensuring everyone has equal rights or prosecuting violent and dangerous criminals? Writing. Task. You are going to write an essay expressing your opinion. Exercise 1. A car has been stopped for driving too fast in a residential area. Discuss these questions with a partner. A. Should there be speed limits in areas like this? Why or why not? B. What should happen to motorists who break these speed limits? Exercise 2. You are going to write an essay in answer to this question. Should motorists who drive too fast in residential areas be banned from driving? Firstly, decide what your opinions are on this subject. Is your answer yes, no, or it depends? Secondly, plan your essay in four paragraphs, using the essay on the previous page as a model. Write notes under these headings. Paragraph 1, background to the topic. Paragraph 2, arguments for. Paragraph 3, arguments against. Paragraph 4, your opinion. Exercise 3, write your essay in 200 to 220 words. A, use ideas you discussed in exercise 1. You may use expressions from the useful language box. B. Follow your paragraph plan and express your ideas clearly and simply. Make sure readers know what your opinion is. Check. Exercise 4. When you have finished writing, read your essay carefully. A. Check your spelling, grammar and punctuation. B. Exchange essays with a partner. As you read, ask yourself these questions. 1. Has he or she answered the questions fully? 2. Has he or she presented arguments for and against? 3. 
Has he or she expressed his or her own opinions clearly? After you have finished, return your partner's essay and exchange thoughts and ideas. Useful language. 1. Expressing intention. Saying what you intend to write about. A. In this essay I intend to look at or consider or discuss some of the arguments for and against. B. First of all, I will look at or consider or discuss the arguments in favor of or against. 2. Expressing obligation. Something you are legally required to do. Motorists are obliged to or need to or must or ought to or should always. 3. Presenting arguments. A. The main point or argument for or against. B. Another point or argument. 4. Expressing opinions. A. In my opinion or view. B. In fact, it's my view that. C. I believe or think that. 5. Expressing an absence of obligation, something you are not legally required to do. Drivers need not or are not obliged to or don't have to. Quote, it is the spirit and not the form of the law that keeps justice alive. Earl Warren.